everybody. Um, today I want to show you guys poetry. So it's better package management for Python. Um, is this thing? Anyway, um, so I am a web developer and I use um, Python in like daily web development stuff. And um, I actually, so, is it okay? Yeah, okay, so I actually am the, uh, I, I run Kirigami basically. So uh, we built a lot of web apps. And in building a lot of web apps, you need a lot of dependencies, right? So by default, with Python, you get pip, right? Which stands for Python, nope, that doesn't stand for, I don't know what it stands for. It's pip, it's a default package manager, and it lets you install stuff, right? It's like pip install something. Um, and for you to be able to save what your project's dependencies are, you need to have a requirements.txt file, right? That's how you would normally do it. Um, and also, if you are a good developer, or if you want to be a good developer, you should be using virtualenv, which provides uh, dependency separation between your different Python projects. So if you're working on Python project A, uh, its dependencies would leak into your other Python projects. Okay, so there are problems with this setup, right? So for example, with pip, requirements that TXC is a pain in the code of conduct. So um, it's, 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 it's really a pain because like every time you install something, you have to add it to the file manually, and sometimes you, you're gonna even have to like specify the versions. So it's kind of a pain. Um, so uh, also, it doesn't save the dependencies of your dependencies, right? So like if you install something like a Django REST framework that depends on a lot of different libraries, none of those will get pinned. And you might come across a situation where you're setting up your project and it doesn't work because the versions of the libraries that you're using is, is broken and it's such a pain, right? And it's so annoying, you lose the day, right? Oh man, so bad. Anyway, so, poem for you guys. I, it took me all night to write this. Roses are red, violets are blue, I use poetry, and so should you. Is it good? <laughs> okay, so poetry, what's poetry? Uh, poetry is, is basically a package management tool for Python that's like a lot easier to use and I'll show you a demo really quickly. Um, so I'm writing this code in this project called Falcon 9 because you know, I have dreams. Um, and let's say we're starting a new project. Just type, oh wait, I should probably like, there, can you see that? Poetry in it, you start a new project, you can name it whatever you want, you can specify a version, description, author, license, the version of Python that you're using, very important. Um, and let's say no to this for now, and no to this for now. Okay, um, yes. All right, so now we've generated a poetry project. So there's one file there, my project, the problem. Let's say we're doing a Django project, so we want to add Django as one of the dependencies. Just type poetry add Django, and this is where my internet will fail, and the whole presentation will come reaching to a halt. Oh no, it's working. Okay, cool. Um, there we go, it's resolving the dependencies. It detected that Django depends on PyTZ, so it's installing that first, and then it's installing um, Django, right? Also, you might notice it says they're writing a lock file. The lock file is very important because that's the thing that specific, like, tells poetry the versions it needs to install, right? Really cool. Also, it comes with virtual end. So you don't need to make a virtual end um, for for the thing. Like it's already there. So if I type pip freeze, you can see. Nope, it didn't work properly. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, right. So it's starting a new virtual end with the uh, dependencies installed. So yeah, it's really cool. Um, let's say you want to install, add more dependencies, you can just keep adding dependencies. So for example, Wagtail has a lot of different dependencies. Um, and um, so it's installing all of that one by one, saving all of it in a file. So the next time when a new developer comes into the project, you just have to type poetry install, it'll install all of the dependencies, all the correct versions, 
and you wouldn't have that headache with requirements that we have to do. Alright, thank you guys. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, my name is Alma Joseph Avadaza. I am 10 years old and I love programming in various languages, including Python, HTML, CSS, a little bit of JavaScript, C Sharp, Lego Edu, Lego NXT, and I hope to learn a lot more in the future. Now, to start off, who knows how to play the game Hot Potato? <laughs> okay, so today, I'm, I have here a native root circuit playground express. It has a touch sensor, a light sensor, a sound sensor, a temperature sensor, a motion sensor, and a lot more things. Today, with my new friends, we're going to use it to play a game of Hot Potato. Now in this game of Hot Potato, which I like calling Hot Boiled Egg, they're going to pass around the egg, and when the lights turn on and the buzzer sounds, whoever is holding the egg will be out. Are you ready? Then let's get started! DJ, hit the music! It's mainly a command line interface, and for if, if the command line interface is pretty good, it's it's pretty it's good enough for most cases. But there are some times where uh, it's a bit cumbersome to use. So if you find yourself copy pasting to and from the terminal or dumping text to a file and then running I don't know whatever script that you use, then this cute trick might be for you. Okay, so. So I'm going to show you three examples, uh, use cases. So the first one is you want to Google some text and then we want to invoke it in using a script. Uh, second is uh, prettifying a JSON. So instead of just like going to prettify JSON, you Google it and then you put your JSON. You can do it 
um, using command F, keyboard shortcut, and um, we show other stuff. So first, we set up a keyboard shortcut. So in Ubuntu, oh wait, wait, so disclaimer wala. Most of this is just, I, I'm not sure if we can do this outside of Ubuntu, so sorry. <laughs> okay, so in Ubuntu, when you mod when you configure a keyboard shortcut, you put a your name, uh, the name of it, and of course the command, the path to the command. So just make sure if you're doing that, it's um, executable. Um, if you're doing info, uh, if you're calling it directly, it should have a uh, the proper interpreter. And you can also uh, use a setup.py to have a console script. So the problem with having the input, uh, the keyboard shortcut, is your, you you do not you, don't, you no longer have the ability to dynamically put uh, arguments on the command as well as to pipe input. So the way we do it is we use the highlighted text at the time of this, when the script is run. So let's say um, our script would be this one, and then we. Uh, Okay, so this one, uh, we this is a simple script that gets the current highlighted text and then just calls the, um, we open up a tab in Google Chrome for it. So you hit the, you hit the thing and then it opens up a Google Chrome, the, a tab for where you have your query set up. So this is a bit simpler, but sometimes you have certain tasks where you like open other stuff. So in my work, we use, uh, Things like Shodan, uh, Virus Total, and then we look up certain IPs. So that's one. Um, so here, we in the left, we see that mainly we could use some sort of like sys uh, the arguments. But for getting the input, we just replace. We use Excel, which is a package that you can uh, install, and then uh, you get it. You get the input. Um, another way is what about the output? So in this case, uh, what we could do is we could. Use the clipboard as your output, so it's got the experience would look like um, something like this. So let's say this is your text, and then you hit hit your keyboard shortcut, and then you can paste it with um, your use. So 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 the way it works is your script pulls the the, the input from the selected text. So in this case, uh, right now I'm selecting it. And then when I hit, hit the keyboard shortcut, it pulls it, and then the output is stored in the clipboard. And then now you can paste it. So you can do this for things like um, extracting email addresses from an uh, arbitrary text. You can use regex for that. And other stuff would be, um, let's say you, uh, you can also use a, the notify, send notify. So in this case, all right, wait. Uh, this one, so I, I made it pink so that you guys can see it. But um, this is a, you can just use your command line for it. So the way it looks is notify, send, hello world. And then it, it, you do it. So you can just call it from your, um, here. So you just call it like this. Call it, notify, send, title, body. So yeah. So with that, you're able to, I don't know, have a more creative way of using scripts and utilizing it in your workflow so that you don't have to copy paste. Uh, so that's it. So yeah, if you want to see the code, I, put, I more or less um, put everything in the repo and then give very uh, concise scripts for it. So this afternoon, I will be presenting a project which is a very simple bot which is inspired by Sheldon, Lon Lon uh, Leonard, and Raj because I am a fan of Big Bang Theory. So they've created a killer bot, but my bot is not a killer bot. So it's just a simple bot. Okay, so. Uses of surveillance bot. Uh, surveillance bot can monitor the grounds, uh, can guard the designated area, and also can be used in search operations. And these are the tools that I have used. Uh, I use Raspberry Pi and then Flask. Uh, I also use Tkinter, jQuery, Bootstrap, HTML, and CSS. And this is my circuit design. As you can see, that I was I did not include. I forgot to include the the two servos, which is for the camera, the pan and tilt. 
So I forgot to... And this is the web interface. So I use Flask. So I created a, a controller which I can control my bot using cell phone, mobile phone, and laptop. So suppose the, the, the video feed of the, the camera or the bot will be shown on the, the page. And forgive me because I was not able to publish my presentation and was not able to document my project. But it is done. And this is the bot that I have created. So I have a simple demonstration. So at, at this time, my my power bank is almost out of power. So I was able to control my bot using keyboard. Forward, left, right, and backward. And at that time, when I was recording my bot, I did not insert my camera because the, the power bank is out of power. I guess that's all. Thank you. Thank you.